glad you could join us today on Earthpower. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Rapid economic growth and the increased agricultural productivity over the past two decades have seen the number of undernourished people drop by almost half. Unfortunately, extreme hunger and malnutrition remain a huge barrier to development in many countries. Over 795 million people are estimated to be chronically undernourished often as a direct consequence of environmental degradation, drought, and loss of biodiversity. Over 90 million children under the age of five are dangerously underweight, and one person in every four still goes hungry in Africa. How fair is it that millions still go to bed hungry when we can do something about it? This is our focus today on the program. Do stay with us. Although the quantity of food available throughout the world today is more than sufficient to feed the entire world's population, hundreds of millions of people remain undernourished because they do not have access to sufficient productive resources. Every five seconds, a child under the age of 10 dies of hunger or malnutrition, more than 5 million of them per year. Out of the over 800 million hungry people, 50% are small farmers, 20% are landless rural dwellers, 10% of them are nomadic herders or small-scale fishermen, and 10% live in urban poverty. Barely 5% are affected by food emergency situations arising from armed conflict, by exceptional climatic conditions, mainly drought or floods, or by violent economic transitions. Of the 5 million children dying each year from hunger and the side effect of malnutrition, only 10% are victims of armed conflict or farming. So experts believe the causes of undernourishment and of death from hunger and malnutrition are immensely complex and they cannot be simply attributed to war or natural catastrophes. They are primarily due to social injustice, to political and economic exclusion and to discrimination. Hundreds of millions of undernourished persons suffer from political and social exclusion while their right to food is violated. Here in Nigeria, the situation they say is not different. The most critical need of the citizen is food. Therefore, government is bound to respect the right of people to food, to protect that right and in circumstances where it is necessary to do so, also to fulfill the right by moving food in large quantities to areas of food deficit and to the vulnerables, the less privileged, the lactating women and the like, and growing children so that they can maximize their mental power at appropriate stages in life. Agri-policy experts say three-quarters of Nigeria's population, or about 150 million people, at the moment suffer from either acute adult malnutrition, child stunting, child wasting, or child mortality, which were all linked to food insecurity. They argue that food is always treated as a need rather than a fundamental human right, stating that attaining food security is practically impossible without right to food. They say Nigeria has no legal framework for food safety. No one is saying that uh, government should give people free of charge, but it is in the context of food as a right that people will meet their own obligation first and foremost of working very hard to earn that right. And the role of government in helping people to do that is to make good policies that will assist, facilitate the process by respecting that right, fulfilling that right, and protecting that right. We are not saying government should get food here and there to give people free of charge. People are private sector people, and they have the obligation to first and foremost make efforts to feed themselves. But to the extent that they are doing so in a particular policy environment, that environment should be conducive to help them achieve their right to food. That is what we are saying. We are asking government 
to uh, address the issues of pollution and other such damages that private sector cause to the environment, that even government agencies cause to the environment uh, in order to protect the ordinary people who are growing food to be able to do it very well. Uh, go on the third mainland bridge and, and perceive the stench that goes on there. That is stench coming from several industrial concerns, pouring effluents into the water bodies. It has driven away fishes. It has killed the ones that stay back. Therefore, uh, in, in that way, the private sector itself is, is destroying the people's right to food. And we, we will not like that to continue. It is now the role of government to protect that right by taking care of the private sector that is continually doing that. These are policy issues born out of the framework of food as a right. Most Nigerians are well aware that the agricultural sector has historically been neglected in favor of petroleum. A poorly performing agricultural sector limits the domestic supply of food, directly affecting its availability and affordability. As a major employer of labor, low productivity in Nigerian agriculture also implies low incomes, high poverty rates, and limited purchasing power. The reasons for low agricultural productivity are fairly well known, experts believe. They say limited availability and high cost of good quality inputs such as fertilizer, seed, chemicals and medicines for livestock, poor support infrastructure, weak extension services, underdeveloped rural input, output and financial markets, substandard rural networks, numerous unsuccessful policies and programs. All of these factors result in troublingly low yields of staple crops. Despite numerous strategies to increase rice production and favorable rice ecologies, average rice yields in Nigeria are between 1 and 2.5 tons per hectare against potential yields of 5 to 6 tons per hectare. Though a major maize producing African country, maize yields in Nigeria are less than 2 tons per hectare on average compared to greater than 9 tons per hectare attained in the United States. 